Good morning, friends. My name is Tony. I'm a member of Grace Fellowship Church in Davenport, Iowa. I'm here this week sent by my pastors to serve alongside Liberty Baptist Church of Norwalk. I'm out here today under the leadership of Pastor Max Graves, who is here preaching as well, here with other brothers, here locally in Iowa, Arizona, and we're all here under the common bond of Christ. As different as we are as men, we have that eternal common bond of faith in Jesus Christ, which gives us immediate fellowship and a love for one another that the world doesn't understand. And we're out here today to bring to you the good news of the gospel. The good news that your sins can be forgiven. The good news that you can be reconciled to the God that you've always known. The good news that you can have the assurance of eternal life. Not by anything you have done to earn it or deserve it, but by the grace of God alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. And who is Jesus? It used to be, if you mentioned the name Jesus, everyone knew who you were talking about not anymore because there are so many different ideas beliefs about who Jesus is there is only one Jesus there's only one belief about Jesus that is true and it is that which conforms to the truth of Christ's own words who is this Jesus he is the eternal son of the one and only triune God God is one there is one God who created the heavens, and that one God is one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God the Son has always existed, just as God the Father and God the Spirit, for God is eternal. God is eternal. And at a time appointed by God the Father before the foundation of the world, God the Father sent God the Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the sinless Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah who will judge both the living and the dead. He was with the Father in creation and all things were created by Him and through Him and for Him. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is truly God while at the same time truly man. This is the one and only Jesus. And if you believe in any other Jesus, you are believing in a Jesus that you've created in your imagination. A Jesus that you will not stand before one day to be judged because that Jesus doesn't exist outside of your mind. That same Jesus you've created in your mind, however, also cannot save you. That same Jesus cannot forgive your sin because that Jesus is one you've created in your mind. He doesn't exist outside of your mind. My friends and I are here today to declare to you the one and only true Jesus. Not the Jesus of the Mormon cult that believes that Jesus is the spirit brother of Satan himself and a created being. Not the false Jesus of the Watchtower Society that believes that he's the incarnation of Michael the Archangel. Not the false Jesus of Islam who sees him as nothing more than a, a human being and a prophet. Not the Jesus of many so-called Christian churches that hang pictures of him as some blonde-haired, blue-eyed, effeminate surfer boy. That's not Jesus either. That's not Jesus either, sir, is it? It's, no. n it's not. There you go. There you go. Now, my friends, one day, one day each and every one of us, whether you believe it or not, is irrelevant because truth is not determined by what you believe. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Can I interrupt you for a minute? And when you look at, at the very bottom of that picture, it says J.C. It may mean Jesus Christ. No, yeah. it's Julio Christo. See the game? Mm -hmm. See the game they be playing? Yes. 
Yes, I do. Yes, I do. One day, my dear friends, you're all going to stand before this God who created you. You're going to stand before him to give an account for your life. Why is that? Because you have sinned and fallen short of his glory. See, you were created in the image of God. That doesn't mean you are a God. And it doesn't mean you're a child of God. But you were created in his image. And as such, this God who created you has written his law on your heart. You know the difference between right and wrong because you were created in the image of God. You know the difference between right and wrong not because of what your teacher taught you. You know the difference between right and wrong not because of what your parents taught you. You know the difference between right and wrong not because of what some TikTok influencer might have told you. You know the difference between right and wrong not because of what your friend might have convinced you of. You know the difference between right and wrong because you were created in the image of God and as such, He has written His law on your heart. He has given you a conscience. No matter how much you may deny that, no matter how the love of sin has seared that conscience, you know the difference between right and wrong. Would you like a Bible? There you go. You say that the version of the one to come back, right? The, uh, the Jesus of our understanding is uh, not the one in our head. It is the one in the Word. That's right. It's right. not a Jesus of our creation. Okay. It's the it's the Jesus who is, who is the author and perfecter of faith for the Christian, who is the author of his Word, who is the Word who became flesh. And so what that book, what that Bible says about Jesus is the only truth about him. So whatever a person believes about Jesus, if it in any way contradicts the very words of Jesus, which aren't only the letters in red, but every word from Genesis 1 through Revelation 22, if we believe anything about Jesus that is not affirmed, taught, confirmed in that word, we have created a Jesus in our mind to suit ourselves, a Jesus that doesn't exist. And that's what every man-made religion has done. And that's what most people who would say that they're not religious have done. They've created a Jesus in their mind maybe that doesn't exist. Right? That's a false Jesus as well because, of course, he does. He's eternal. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. So, no so, sir, do you have any particular spiritual beliefs? Yes, I'm a prophet. So You're a prophet. Yeah. How, how do you define that word prophet? Prophet is uh, basically uh, God's messenger, or you know, rule rule binding, uh, okay. rule binding minister, so, or rule binding official. Okay, like so a, I'm, like a custodian. This that's what a prophet does, right there. Okay, so I'm going to repeat some of what you're saying, just so those who don't have the context of our conversation can, you know, follow along as we're having this this dialogue. So you believe a prophet is a messenger of God? Yeah. Uh, you compared a prophet to a custodian, someone who's God's custodian. Do I have that right? Correct. My name's Tony, by the way. Your name is? Uh, um, Marcus. Marcus. Good to meet you, Marcus. Tell me All right. So, so Marcus, um, as, as a custodian of God, as a messenger of God, as you claim, what is your message for me and the world today? What is your message? Hmm. I'll say it in tongues from God. Yeah. Well, I, I want you to say it in English yeah, because yeah, your yeah, tongues yeah. will just be babble to me. Okay, right? Okay. So you need to explain the message that you have from God in words that I can understand. All right. You told me to tell you, Jesus, English. Okay, I don't understand hamana, hamana, hamana. You got to actually use English. I know, I know. I only speak English. Hold on, sir. Hold on, hold on. I am going to speak English. That's how I communicate with him. Okay? And before I leave, you'll be talking that way when I leave because it is... Okay, so as a prophet, I just want to make sure we're clear. Yeah. So Marcus, as a prophet, you're declaring to me that once you're done speaking, I'm going to speak the same way you're speaking. 1 Corinthians 11, yes you will. Okay, that's not what 1 Corinthians 11 teaches. 1 Corinthians that 11 says that there's 11 gifts. 
in the Holy Spirit, and one of them is speaking in a tongue to your father. Who okay, but as a prophet, though, you've declared to me that by the time you're done talking to me, I too am going to be speaking in tongues. Yes, because I'm going to teach you. Okay, and so that's what God's telling me. So to I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop you now, Marcus. Okay. And I'm going to declare you for what I knew you were when you walked up. Okay. What's and for that? what I know you are now. What's that? And that is a false prophet condemned by God to hell. Are you judging me right now? No, God is already. Ju I'm not judging you. I don't have the authority okay. to judge you. What I'm telling you, Marcus, not as a prophet in the sense of giving you new revelation and new knowledge, but as a prophet who is forth telling you what God's word has already said, I'm not condemning you. I'm telling you, Marcus, that's you are con that's a, that's Marcus, I'm, that's a, Marcus, I'm, I'm telling down. you, Marcus, Sir. I'm telling you, you're condemned already. First Corinthians You're 13, condemned when it already. talks about love. First Corinthians 13, when it talks about love. Marcus, when what prophecy, is... When prophecies may cease... Marcus, what is the no, gospel? What is the gospel? What is the gospel, Marcus? G-O, go and spell. We are witches. We are mystics. We are witches and mystics. Are Marcus, witches, you are, are a false prophet. I am not, And you sir. are of your father, the right, devil. So, okay, you ready? So you so need Christ. You're, you're talking about Jesus, right? So at this point, hold on, wait, wait, for wait, those of you who are within the sound of my voice, I'm going to begin to ignore Marcus. Because you are, Marcus you are is of his false, father, the devil. You are a false prophet. Marcus does not know you Jesus are Christ. A family Marcus of is Mormons. not a prophet. You are In a, fact, a family of Mormons. Right? Allow me to tell you why and I know father, from the Word of God that Marcus father, is not a prophet. And, your father killed your and this mother. is why. And your father killed your mother. My and father you did not it. kill my mother. And Marcus is a false it. prophet. And you watched it. And you said to yourself, Hebrews chapter one in the first four, yourself, four verses tell us this. You said to yourself, Long ago at many times mom, and in mom, many ways, are you okay, God mom? spoke to our fathers mom, mom. by the prophets. Are you okay? God at one time your did in father, fact speak through the prophets. Your father took you and slept but in you. these last days, he has spoken to okay. us by his Sir, son. S-O-N. So by Sir, his I'm son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. There are millions upon millions of people today, many of them here in Southern California, who believe in this idea, this false notion, that there are prophets walking among us who have new messages from God. None of that is true. The Word of God declares it. It's not the Word according to Tony. It's the Word of God that declares that there are no prophets among us today. For in former days of old, God did in fact speak from prophets. And what the Word of God said about prophets is that when they spoke on behalf of God in the name of God, they could never be wrong. And if they were wrong, they were to be stoned to death as false prophets. Did your mother died your father's hands. So that's how you know, because you didn't answer it. Your, your mother died at your father's hands. You watched it, and he molested you, correct? So therefore, here's the word for you. You are never going to get off the street if you don't start believing in other things, other people, per se. And then on top of that, you judge me. Before I get so again, there were prophets in, in older days, but when Christ came, those prophecies were fulfilled. Because Jesus right. Christ is because the last prophet. Jesus he, Christ is the last priest. Jesus Christ me. is the last you know king. Before he judged me, and he has spoken to us through his word. I'm a millionaire. And my dear I'm friends, here's going. what his word tells us. I'm a millionaire. That it's appointed I'm once for a person to die, and, and after you, that, the judgment. Me. One day, each and every one of us, you and me both, sir, each and every one of us are one day going to stand before God to give an account for our life. I'm a millionaire. And he's going to judge us. He's going to judge us for lying, like claiming to be a millionaire when you're clearly not. He's going to judge us for declaring things in the name of God that aren't true, like this false prophet has this morning. He's going to judge us for every lie that we've told. He's going to judge us for everything we've ever stolen. He's going to judge us for every time we've taken God's name in vain, which includes speaking on behalf of God when you have not been sent. He's going to judge us, each and every one of us, for any time we've ever hated another human being. For God's word declares that if we've ever, if we've ever harbored bitterness or resentment in our heart, if we've ever hated another human being, then we are a murderer at heart. 
For my friends, murder begins in the heart. It moves to the mind where it might formulate a plan. And then it goes to the hand where it may or may not carry the act, but that murder, that hatred, began in, in the hatred. heart. No, that hatred began you in the sure heart. So my friends, the you and I are there. again part of the ultimate statistic. 10 out of 10 people die. When we die, we're going to stand before this God who has created us. We're going to give an account and he's going to judge us according to that perfect moral standard that he's written on our heart, that law. And like me, my friends, like me, each and every one of us are going to be found guilty. For who among us can say that we've never told a lie? Who among us can say that we've never stolen anything or borrowed something without ever returning it? Who among us can say that we've never taken the Lord's name in vain? Who among us can say that we've never looked at a man or a woman who was, and there are only men or, and women, by the way. There are only men and women, by the way. Who among us can say that we have not looked at a woman to lust after her? or a woman say that she's looked at, looked at a man to lust after him. No, we're all guilty, we've all sinned against God, we've all fallen short of his glory. And so when we die and we stand before this creator God who is good and who alone is good, he is going to find us guilty of breaking his law. And because of that, he's going to do what's right, my dear friends. Oh, shut the fuck up! No, I love you too much to shut up, ma'am. I love you far too much to shut up. I love you more than you love yourself because you love death and hate God. I love you too much, ma'am. This God who is holy and righteous and just, this God who is good, finding you guilty of breaking his law is going to send you to hell for all eternity as the just punishment for your sin. And my friends, we do not want that for you. We do not want that for you. We're here because we love you. We love we love the woman who is yelling and screaming at us to shut up. We love Marcus, the false prophet. We love each and every person here. And the only reason we can love you in this way is because God first loved us. That's the only way. My dear friends, before Christ saved me, before Christ forgave me of my sins and gave me the gift of eternal life, I would not care for a moment whether or not you die and go to hell. There was only one important person in the universe to me, and that was me. And if I said I love someone, it's because I wanted something from them. If I did something kind for someone, it's because I wanted something from them. In everything I did, there was an element of selfishness because I was the God of my own universe. I was depraved. I was dead in my sin. I loved death. I hated God. And I cared for no one other than me. I would not be standing out here today, but for Jesus Christ. The two greatest commandments that God has given is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And the greatest love I, as a Christian, can show to God is to come out here and to declare to you the goodness of God. There is no greater way I can show my love for God than to come to you, dear people, and declare my love for God. There's no greater way I can love you as my neighbor than to come out here and warn you about the wrath of God to come, that at the moment, if you are not in Christ, abides upon you at this moment, and then with love for you, point you to the only one who can forgive your sin, to the only one who can set you free from the slavery of sin, the only one who can reconcile you to himself, the only one who could give you the assurance of eternal life, and that is Jesus Christ the Lord. And anyone who represents Christ, anyone who says they know Christ, if they will not tell you these things, they do not love you. They do not love you. Because friends, real friends, warn their friends who are in danger. My friend, whether I know you or not, it, if you were looking at your phone, if you're texting, if you're TikToking or whatever, and you step out here into Lancashire, and you know how dangerous that can be even when you're watching what's going on, and I see that you're not paying attention, and I see the cars coming, and I stand there and I go, man, I wonder if that guy's going to get nailed. You're not paying us. That I wonder if that guy's going to get nailed. 
man, that'll give me two, three million views on, on TikTok and YouTube if that guy gets hit in the car, hit by that car. Would that be love? Wouldn't love be for me to warn that person? Hey, look where you're going, there's cars coming. And if that person doesn't listen, maybe doesn't hear me, run over, lovingly grab that person by the arm and say, you're about to get hit by a car. What if the person wanted to kill themselves? What if that person didn't want my help? Should I just say, well, that's up to you, go ahead, kill yourself? No, I should still grab that person by the arm and pull them out of the street and say, I don't want you to die. Wouldn't that be loving? To warn you about the wrath of God that presently abides on you is to love you as my neighbor because at this moment if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior you are in danger of hellfire for all eternity and I don't want that for you but it's not enough for me to yank you out of the street it's not enough for me to grab you by the arm and say don't do that dust you off and walk away there's more to love than that not only do I have to pull you away from the wrong direction, I have to point you in the right direction. And the only right direction is this. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Your only hope, my dear friends, is to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. God the Father sent his Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. Truly God, truly man, and without sin. Born of a virgin, just as the prophet Isaiah declared some 800 years before his birth. He lived a life of utter and complete perfection in obedience to God the Father for some 33 years, a life you and I cannot live for 33 seconds. Yet even though he knew no sin as God in the flesh, at a time appointed by God the Father before the foundation of the world, God the Son voluntarily submitted himself to the torturous bloody death of a Roman cross. He died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and I rightly deserve for our sins against God. And unlike every false god created in the imaginations of men, Mohammed is dead, Buddha is dead, Krishna is dead, every past pope is dead, and the new current pope will be dead, Oprah's gonna die, your favorite guru's gonna die. Unlike every false god created in the imaginations of men, Jesus Christ is alive today. He is alive today. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. What is your question? Are you a sinner? Yes, sir, I am. Are you ever going to repent? I have, sir. I repent every day of my life. Yes, sir. And the only reason, the only reason I know for a fact that I'm a sinner, and it's not just a word to, to make people feel good about me, the only reason I know for a fact that I am a sinner and deserving God's wrath, the only reason I know I need to repent not once but every day of my life is because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross who died for us unrepentant sinner like me. So yes, sir, to answer your question, I am a sinner, and yes, sir, I have repented, and all glory goes to God, because none of that would be possible without Christ. Do you still sin? Yes, sir, I do. So then what have you repented from? I've repented of those sins that I've sinned, that come to my knowledge, that others bring to my knowledge. So if you repent from a sin, that means you don't commit that sin anymore. No, that's not true, sir. It's not true. Are you sure? It's not no because the word of God tells us in 1 John that anyone who goes on sinning, anyone who practices sin, anyone who makes a habit of sinning ought not believe that they belong to God, that the love of God is not in them. So as a course of life because of the regenerative work, I'm going to finish my you asked your question, I'm going to answer it, sir. Cuz yeah, I, I know I am a long-winded guy, right? But sometimes, sir, my name's Tony by the way. Daryl. Daryl, good to meet you. Sometimes, uh, Daryl, and this may not be you, so I'm not making an accusation, but but oftentimes, Daryl, when, when I'm out preaching or engaging people in conversation, I'll answer a question, 
they won't like the answer or they weren't actually looking for an answer and they'll run to their next question. I'm not accusing you of that. I have a, uh, I have a lot of questions. Okay, you. good, good. And, I, and I'll answer as many as I can. That's why I'm looking for like fast answers. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to give you fast answers. Okay. Because I care too much about your soul just to, okay. and I'm not competing with you and I'm not going to have an argument. So it's not important. Yeah, no, it's, I'm, not, I'm not looking so, for an argument. Okay, so Daryl, it's not important to me that I answer the question to your liking. And it's not important to me that I answer the questions the way you would like me to. And it's not important to me that I give short answers. Okay. Because it's more important for me to accurately communicate the yeah. truth to you. Let me give you a, a more detailed question then. Are there any sins that you did commit that you repented from that you don't commit anymore? I don't know. So you're just a, a willfully sinner? No, you no. Sin every day? Like no, no. That, that, sir, would be called a straw man. You took what I said. You, yeah, you I built, mean, but, you, but you're Daryl. You, you, you know? took, you took what I said. You built up a false narrative based on what I said, and then you burned it down and attacked it. That's called a logical fallacy, known as a straw man. And I'm not going to engage in those things with you because I'm actually out here to proclaim the good news of the gospel. So I'm going, so I'm going to engage you for a certain amount of time. Yeah. But, but once it becomes a detriment to the proclamation of the gospel, I'm going to move on and just hope that you repent and turn to Christ. Well, okay. So if I, we're going to have a conversation, I, 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 I we're not going to do straw man. I, I do things like that. That's, I don't eat pork. I don't eat shellfish. I don't shave my beard. Yeah, God has nowhere commanded you not to eat pork or shellfish. Those tassels aren't going to save I you. I wear fringes. Those, I'm, that, I'm none of those things are going to help I you. I don't say they're going to save me, but okay. I'm eligible for salvation. You're not. Not by, not by anything you do. You're not. No, Daryl, you're, not. You you're, know, not, you're not eligible for salvation because know, of anything you do. Do you know who you descend from? I descend from Adam. Are you an Israelite? Oh, are you part of the Black Israelite group? I, I didn't or? say that. I'm no. asking. Are well, you I'm, I'm waiting for some integrity in the conversation I, here. Because you're talking just I, like I, a Black I, Hebrew I, I, I Israelite, Bible, so I'm wondering. And I know the Bible, so I'm asking. Well, no, Daryl, you, you actually don't Israelite? know the Bible. I, no, I, I'm I not. Do. I am I actually, do. in this sense, and I'm going to answer your I, question. I That's why I'm asking. So, Daryl, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm only going to give you a moment or two. No, I'm trying to answer you. I am an Israelite. I am of, li listen to me, Dar I'm going to finish my, it's easy okay, question. so it's Daryl, easy, it's I know the easy, tactics. It's an easy question. I know, the, I know I'm answering the question. Okay, what is it? I am an Israelite in the, the truest, in the truest sense of the word, because no man is a Jew based on his birth. No man is a Jew based on his tribe. No man is a Jew based on his family lineage. Uh, a person is truly Jewish, a person is truly an Israelite if he has been born again inwardly by the Spirit of God through repentance and faith in Jesus and how Christ. Do you, how do you be born again? God causes a person to be born again. So First Peter 3 if, says if that still, God causes a person to be born again. If you're still, it's not by anything you do. If you're still sinning, does that mean you're born again? Because in 1 John I know it says completely otherwise. No, it doesn't say that. Because you don't actually does, understand the Greek does, text. It it's in the perfect it. tense. It, it talks about someone who is practicing sinning. It doesn't. It doesn't say that you. If you ever sin, you're not. You're not born again. If you ever sin, if you ever sin, you do not know God. That is not at all what it says. It says if you're a person who claims to know God, as you do, if you're a person who claims to know God and you practice sinning, as you do then you ought not have any expectation of all, at all that you are of God, that you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. Do you practice sinning? I do not practice sinning. Okay, so how do you, how do, what do you repent from then? I repent from those sins that I commit. So do you eat pork at the moment? Sure, because Jesus right. said kill that, and eat. So that, yes, I eat everything that God has provided. That, that's practicing sinning. No, it's not. Okay, well, what is practicing sinning is denying the truth of God's word and claiming that somehow you know God because of this false idea that you belong to a tribe. In, in first You're John, blaspheming God. In 1 John, it says that if you love God, you do the commandments. It says that if you sin, that's a transgression of the law. So right. I'm, I'm trying to find out if right. you're sinning. And so how are you forgiven for your transgressions of the law? Because I repented and I don't do those okay, things. Okay, so you're forgiven by repentance. Course. Okay, that's that's actually not true. You're not forgiven by repentance. That's how you repent. No, so so um, Daryl, Daryl, if you were arrested, Daryl, if you were arrested and you stood before a judge, Daryl. Hey, what tribe are you from? Let's, I'm from. I, I am a, a son of God, and I am born again, and I am a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. It doesn't matter you, you whether or not I'm Italian question. or Benjamite or, or Judah in or Zebulun. In Revelations, there's going to be 12 gates with the 12 tribes on them. So you're not going to know which gate to go into. Am I correct? Uh, Daryl, you already don't know what gate to go through. 
Daryl, you're so lost. You don't know what gate to go through. The only gate to go through is Jesus Christ, Daryl. And I'm, you deny Christ. I can tell you what tribe I'm from. You don't know what tribe you're from, Daryl. You got a picture of Christ you, up you here? You don't know what you don't know what tribe you're from, Daryl. You, you got a picture okay. of Christ up here? All right, so Daryl is part part of this street cult known as the Black Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> they they it is a racist cult that believes that that unless you're black and you can so-called trace trace your that. lineage to I the twelve that. tribes, I never said that. that you're not that you're not uh, going to be accepted by God. I never said they that. believe that white people will be slaves in heaven. They believe that. They believe rape will be okay in their version of heaven. Not all of not all black Israelites. Not all, but many of them do. And and it is a, a cult like the Jehovah's Witnesses, like Mormons. Uh, like uh, any other man-made religion like Islam that denies the deity of Jesus Christ, that denies the good news of the gospel that Daryl has heard and the rest of you have heard. Hey. And so what Daryl needs is the same thing Christ? that every other human being needs. Daryl needs Christ. Christ. Daryl needs Christ. Do you have a picture of Jesus Christ? No, I don't. I don't carry I, pictures I'm, of I'm Jesus not, Christ. I'm not sinning. You are. So I, I don't need Jesus more than you do. You yeah. need Jesus. No, you, but you're not going to get him. But... I already have it. What, what tribe are you? In from? fact, it's not that. It's the fact. It's not that I have Jesus. You're, it's that Jesus has me. You're, you're sinning. See, because right I didn't pick Jesus. I didn't choose Jesus. <laughs> I didn't select Jesus. You can't be God a the Father before the foundation of the world. You can't be a sinner. Numbered His elect, you all of those who will come to repentance and faith you can't be a in Jesus Christ. On this platform. Daryl, you're a hypocrite. You can't be preaching. You're a hypocrite, Daryl. You Why can't I? By what authority, Daryl? Up here sinning. By what authority, I mean, Daryl? No I'm not sinning by calling you to repentance and faith in Christ. I'm not. Prophet. I'm not. I'm not a false prophet because false what prophet. I'm speaking is you true, even, according even, to the Word of you're God. You're not even following the commandments and the laws. Neither are you, Daryl. Yes, I I'm am. not saved by following okay. the commandments and the laws. I didn't say you are. I'm either. saved by grace through faith I, in Jesus I, I, Christ. I didn't say you are either. It takes faith and works. No, it I'm, doesn't. Yes, that's a does. lie, Daryl. That's a lie. Me, See, here's the thing about faith and works, my friends. Daryl and I'm gonna. I'm I'm going to address a lie that you. Daryl says that it's by faith plus works. That's right. Daryl might be, because the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, Daryl might be referring to what it says in James, where it says, without faith, or with, without works, faith is dead. I'm way beyond Okay, it. you're not way beyond that. The you're way below the that. So cross is a graven image. So you're not going to bring up the cross. So here's the thing about works, my friends. Every man-made religion, including the black Hebrew Israelites, every man-made religion teaches that you must do works. It's not a religion. You must do works in order to be made right with God. So here's the thing, my friends. You don't know God because you sin. So what that's if Daryl was my neighbor? And I wish he was. What if Daryl was my neighbor? Not your neighbor. And I know. I said, I wish you were. I know. I, I wish what you were. What if Daryl was my neighbor? He lived next door to me, and he Black knocked door. on the door, and he said, Hey, Tony, I'm going to mow your lawn so that I could be your son. Gonna I'm going to do that for you so that I could be your son. So I'm going to look at Daryl, and I'm going to say a couple of things. Well, first of all, thank you for getting me out of yard work. Where I'm from in Iowa, grass grows like every single day, right? We don't paint the grass out there in Iowa like some people do in California because it doesn't grow. It's growing constantly. We're mowing the lawn every three or four days sometimes if we get rain. So I'm going to say to Daryl, Daryl, thank you for wanting to do my lawn. I think that's kind of you. Uh, but I'm going to look at Daryl and I'm going to say, Daryl, mowing my lawn will not make you my son. Mowing my lawn will not make you my son. But what if Daryl actually was my son? Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. You're talking around the point. What, what if, what if Daryl was my son? And I come home one day and I see Daryl mowing the lawn. You're talking around the point. And, I, and because Daryl is obstinate and belligerent and disrespectful, as my son, I'm wondering, all right, what's up? What does he want? Does he want the money out of my wallet? Does he want the keys of my car? Does he have a, a girl he needs to tell me about? Did he drop out of school? What is it? So Daryl sees me, and he comes running over, and he says, Dad, Dad, I'm mowing the lawn. I don't want anything from you. I, I love you, and I'm so thankful that you're my dad. That's why I'm mowing the lawn. That's why I'm mowing the lawn. And out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks, Daryl. It finally comes. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth that's, speaks. A no. that's, that's not a sin. That's not a sin. So here's the point of that. Many people faith. like Daryl believe that they're going to do works, that they're going to obey laws that he can't obey, that they're going to obey laws, that they're going to obey the God of their imagination, which Daryl has created for himself, and that based on, and then based on those works, he's going to be allowed into heaven. Based on those works, 
he's going to be accepted as a child of God. That's not true. But for those who by grace through faith have been adopted into God's beloved family through faith in Jesus Christ, they want to do those works that are pleasing to him, not to earn his love, not to keep his love, but because they're so thankful for the free gift of love that they were given by God when they adopted him by faith, through faith, by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ alone. See, Jesus said to people like Daryl, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And Jesus said, I will say to them, I will say to the Daryls of the world on that day, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness. And, and, and who's the worker of lawlessness in this conversation? You if are. I'm not sitting you, you are. You are sitting, Daryl. You've sinned several times since you've been here. Okay, but you are a law unto okay. yourself. The okay. words that come out of your mouth, I, I your denial of Christ, your insistent you. that salvation, whatever you Christ. recognize as salvation, is by faith plus works. All of that is sin. I, hold on. I you're sinning, you. Daryl, because I your lips are moving, my friend. On, expound on I'm answer. hoping that the law of God will close your mouth. I expect you to expound you need on an answer of how I'm sinning. So look, the word of God says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Never said that, that is not only for the atheist. That is for the man or woman who's created a God in their imagination to replace the God who is. And that's what Daryl has done. Daryl is the fool who has said in his heart, there is no God. Hey, devil. He doesn't want to submit to the God he knows, so did. he and his friends have created a God of their imagination to suit themselves. One, you one yet. Uh, now listen to this. Daryl has created a God that loves his sin. Daryl has created a God that name? loves his sin. So Daryl can stand here and say, I don't sin, because the God he's created in his mind no, no, no. loves have, his you sin. Have, you have to prove otherwise. But God does not love sin. Tony, be, be a man God, for a second. In fact, the Tony, word of God says that Tony, he hates sinners. Tony, be a man for a second. And what, so, Tony, be a man for a second. What sin am I committing right now that you I, I've already told you. And you just keep going on and on. I've already told you. You haven't told me. Look, your heart is hard. You're of your father, the devil. I'm here to proclaim the gospel to people God has made ready to hear. It says you're of your father, the devil. Because the, the word of God is an aroma of life sin. unto life to those who are being saved. And it's an aroma of death unto death to those who are Look, perishing. You, you and, your gay and the lover, word of the cross, you and your gay the lover, good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ you and your gay is lover, foolishness to those who are perishing. You and so your gay lover, so he, he shouts profanity. He accuses me and my brother of being gay lovers. You, you don't and he says questions. that he's not sinning. You don't answer any and he says that he's not sinning. Prove me wrong. Such is the heart prove, of the fool. Hey, prove me wrong. So, my dear friends, humble yourself. That way they can't say that. Humble yourselves, my dear friends. The word of God says, do not harden your hearts like so many Daryls do in these days of rebellion. All right. But humble yourself. Get, uh, For God is opposed to the proud. I got a serious question. But he gives grace to the humble. I'm not answering any more of your questions, Daryl. Give me a description. Because I, it would just be to help you store up Look, more wrath no, no, for the no, day no. of wrath. Give me a description. And the of word Jesus of God Christ. says, do not answer a fool in his give, folly, give lest you be Jesus like Christ. him. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is with he was with the Father in creation. Give me a description. Everything has been created by Give him and through him and for him. Give me a he is the sinless Lamb of God Give who came to take away the sins of the world. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, to which at present Daryl does not belong. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah who will judge both the living and the dead. Daryl's question was, give him a description of Jesus. No human being knows what Jesus looked like. I can assure you that he was not a blonde hair, blue eyed, effeminate surfer boy. I can assure you of that. He looked like whatever Jewish man looked like born of Bethlehem 2,000 years ago in Judah. That That's what, what Jesus looked like. Daryl doesn't know what he looks like. Is that what it says around I don't know what he actually looked like. I do know what no picture like. depicted of him hey. is, an, is an accurate represent, don't, representation don't of him. No, it's true like. witness. You don't know what he looks Go like. Go to the book of Revelation. You, no, the book of Revelation does not tell you, you what Jesus looked like. You have that Bible up and read one verse, you fucking devil. Now do it. Hear him? There you go. 
right? He says he knows God. He says he doesn't sin, right? While, while, while he vomits cursing, while he vomits profanity, while he vomits blasphemy, because the God he created in his mind is okay with sin. With, is okay with sin. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. The word of God says, let no unwholesome word proceed for your mouth, but only such a word that will give grace to those who hear for the moment. You ever read what verse is so again, my friends, for you and and Daryl, I want to thank you. I want to, I do want to thank Daryl, and I am sincere Wait, about this. Can I take this one? Before Daryl showed up, there was only one or two people within the sound of my voice. Daryl is being used by the one and true living so God that ass. he does not know so to draw a crowd for you to you hear this anything. good news. You don't know God the Father sent His Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. Verse. Truly God and truly man and without sin. He was born of a virgin just as the prophet Isaiah declared some 800 years before his birth. Unlike you and me, unlike Daryl, unlike every human being, he lived a life of perfection from cradle to grave as God in the flesh. He lived that perfect, sinless life for some 33 years, a life you and I can't live for 33 seconds. Yet even though he knew no sin, at a time appointed by God the Father, before the foundation of the world, God the Son voluntarily submitted himself to the torturous, bloody death of a Roman cross. He died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and I rightly deserve for our sins that we've committed against God. And then three days later, after being buried in the grave, three days later, unlike Daryl's God, unlike Oprah's God, unlike Krishna, unlike Buddha, unlike Islam's God, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, rose from the grave not s simply in a spiritual sense but bodily Jesus and he and 40 days later he ascended into heaven where he name, now Tony? sits at the right hand what's of his, power what's his real name and he will one day return at a day and a time no man knows what's his real name? but he will one day turn and he will return as the lion of the tribe of judah hey, you, you to judge so both close, the living yeah. and the dead and my dear friends, you don't want to be on the receiving end of that terrible swift sword. That That's why we're out here bringing you the gospel. We're out here with the love of God and love for you to bring you the gospel. Only someone who would hate you would not want you to hear this message. That in and of itself shows the level of hatred a human being could have for their fellow human beings. When they are hearing the good news of how your sins can be forgiven, how you can be reconciled to the God you know, and have offended your whole life by your sin, and how you can have that forgiveness and assurance of eternal life by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, anyone who would keep that message from you, or try to keep that message from you, hates you. And they are by definition then a murderer at heart. And the word of God says that no murderer will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And over and over and over again, Daryl has murdered us in his heart while claiming to represent God. Hey, you're not and he's brother. created a God in, in he's created a God in his imagination to you're suit not, yourself. And brother, maybe you have, my friends. No, I'm not your brother. I know you're not. You're I'm not. Brother. I want to be. You know you don't. I want to you be your you brother. But we can only be brothers if, like me, you turn from your sin and put your trust in Christ alone for your committed? salvation. I and, I, and my hope for you, Daryl, is that you will do just that hey, be, because I hey, desperately before, want to call you brother up, I because I love bus, you. Before I get on my bus, give me a man-to-man -man real answer. What's I've, I've been giving you man-to-man -man real bullshit. answers, Stop but you bullshitting. do not want the answer you're, you're just talking because you hate the God you know. You haven't opened you that You hate the Christ who died for sinners and you love your sin. And it's foolishness to you. So again, my friends, don't let it be foolishness hey, Tony, to you the way it is foolishness shit, to this young man. My hope and prayer for you and for Daryl is that he will turn from his sin and turn from his love of sin and turn toward God prayer, and by faith and by faith alone an receive Jesus Christ your, as your his prayer, Lord and your Savior. Your an That's what I want for Daryl. That's what I want for you. Your That's prayer, what I want for you. Your prayer is an That's what I want for all of you. My dear friends, it's appointed once for a person to die and after that the judgment. And when you die, you're going to stand before your creator, not the God you've created in your imagination, but the God who created you. Your prayer and he's going to judge you according to the perfect moral law that he's written on your heart. A perfect moral law that does not include wearing tassels. A perfect moral law that does not include not eating pork. A perfect moral law that does not include not eating shellfish. 
a perfect moral law written on your heart. A law that says you shall not lie and you shall not steal and, and you shall not harbor bitterness or resentment in what your heart and murder in your heart. A, a law that says that you will not commit adultery. A law that says that you will be not covetous, wanting something that doesn't belong to you because you do not have it. A, a law which are summed up in the two greatest commandments. The greatest commandment being to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and mind, love, and strength. What is love in the and the second commandment being like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And, what is and love? that love is to love in such a way that you are willing to sacrifice for another human being for love? their greater good. And that's what I'm doing for Daryl. What is love? I'm taking all of his abuse. You're not even I'm talking. taking all You're of his blasphemy. I'm taking all of his anger and hatred and You're venom. Not, I'm taking that because taking I'm it. concerned for Daryl. I love Daryl. And I do not want want him to perish in his sin. You're not even responding I'm not responding because, because the word of God sin. says, do not answer a fool in his folly, you lest me? you be like him. How do you love me, but you can't respond to I am me. loving you with the gospel, do you know but you love, know do you not know love. What love is? You don't, Daryl. I do. I do know what love is. I do know what love is. I do know what love is. What was that, sir? Okay. Is this your bus, Daryl? Yeah, it is. I hope it doesn't crash while you're on it. Certainly for the rest of these people and for you. I'll see you in slavery. You no, you won't. See, it. again, it comes yeah, out now. Yeah, it will. Daryl believes, Daryl believes that there will be slaves in heaven. No one, no one will be enslaved to other people. Everyone in heaven will be a slave, though. They will be a slave to Christ. They will be a slave to the righteousness of Christ. And what Daryl doesn't understand is that by getting on this bus, that his life is a vapor. Hey, you can't answer a damn that he's not God. promised his next breath. You can't answer a damn that he's not God. promised his next heartbeat. That he's not promised that this bus is going to make no, it from right point right. A to point B. I don't want it to crash. I don't want anything bad to happen to Daryl or anyone else on the bus. But the reality is Daryl's getting on that bus with the assumption that it's going to get him to where he wants to go. And he's going to make it in one piece. My friends, God has not promised you your next breath. God has not promised you your next heartbeat. The Word of God says, now is the appointed time. Today is the day of salvation. And if you hear His voice today through the proclamation of the Gospel, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts like so many in these days of rebellion, but humble yourself. Humble yourself. For God is opposed to the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. My dear friends, why is God opposed to the proud? Why is He at war with the proud? Why are proud people enemies of God? Because God humbled Himself. Because God humbled Himself, the second person of the one and only triune God, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, God humbled Himself to take on human flesh, humbled Himself to die a death He did not deserve on that Roman cross. So that's why there are no proud black Hebrew Israelites in heaven. That's why there are no proud Baptists. I'm a Baptist. That's why there are no proud Baptists in heaven. That's why there are no proud Presbyterians in heaven. That's why there are no proud Pentecostals in heaven. That's why there are no proud homosexuals in heaven. Because there are no proud people in heaven. Do you honestly think that you're going to hold on to your pride and God is going to overlook your sinful pride? and allow you into heaven and trample under feet the blood of Christ that was humbly shed? You're a fool if you believe that. No, there are no proud people in heaven. And the only way you will ever be humble is if you are humbled by God, by His grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. You cannot, you will not, and you don't want to humble yourself. That is a work of God. Salvation is of the Lord. So turn to Christ and live, dear friends, while God has given you time. We would love to have reasonable conversations with you. And we'll talk to you if you're like Daryl too. And we have scriptures for you. We have Bibles. They're free. No salesmen will come to your door. We don't want anything from you. We want everything for you. And that is the forgiveness of your sin and the gift of eternal life by the grace of God alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Turn to Christ and live while God has given you time.